Hello again. That's a beautiful sunny morning this morning and I'm out and about stomping along the lanes and footpaths. It's exactly today, one year, since I completed the Cape Wrath Trail. What I'm going to do is just reflect now a year on my thoughts on the trail, things that uh, perhaps I wouldn't have said when I freshly completed it. The first thing to say is that it's definitely one of the major achievements of my life. Uh, I'm very proud of having got done it solo in a reasonable time and enjoyed it and got to the end in one piece. And uh, that feeling of sort of satisfaction and pride hasn't dimmed over the year. So let's see, shall we start off with things that weren't so good about the trail? It's too long and there are too many hills. It is a big one, and there are lots of big hills, and the going can be really rough underfoot, you know, it's not an easy trail. But that's kind of the point, isn't it? If it was shorter and easier, you know, would it be so enticing? Last May was particularly wet, certainly the weeks that I chose to walk the trail at the beginning of May, and that made life a lot uh, less easy than you know, the, the length the amount of ascent and descent and the weather all combined to make it a, a tough walk to complete. I think you've got to accept that going along the trail and the trail that distance there are going to be days that are tough, days that don't come easy when uh, the accumulation of fatigue is going to be a big factor and those are the days that will determine if you like the make or break of the success of the trail. So uh, I know for me there was a couple of days where uh, it wasn't, it didn't come easy, shall we say, and uh, that kind of mental, <laughs> I was going to say determination, but I think probably stubbornness is probably a better word, just that sort of single-minded uh, uh, pursuit and uh, determination to, to carry on, um, it's something you really need, especially if you're doing the trail on your own and there's nobody else to, you know, to give you a bit of a hurry up or a bit of a pep talk or anything like that at all. On days uh, three and four I also had a very uh, shall we say upset tummy and that didn't help so going over the rough bands of Noy Dart on an empty stomach feeling like death mm, not recommended. With hindsight I think I also made big mistakes with the gear that I took not necessarily equipment wise everything worked properly but I took too much food and carried too much weight in the form of snacks. Now there were a few particularly tough days that are etched into my memory. Uh, number one, the day from uh, Oiko River uh, north uh, past the, on the, passing to the east of Ben Moore. That was a killer. <laughs> I didn't go over to Inch and Damp and break it down to two days. I did one day uh, arching round and then stopping just short of Glen Bothy. That was a big day and quite hard going. The other one I didn't really enjoy <laughs> as much was Bilac Bernays, uh, which was uh, just before the drop down in towards Craig. Uh, the route up there, very rough going, uh, very uh, difficult to pick up path of any kind and it was quite a long hard slog best part of a morning and when you get to the top of Biak Bernays it's a pretty grim place it's a bit a bit windswept and bleak and desolate so not really worth the slog so yeah those two bits of the trail were the bits that I didn't enjoy so much and I think the other tough day was like everyone says uh, the, the Noid art section is hard but um what I found particularly tiring, perhaps because I was not feeling too well, was this section up the side of the Karnak River um, past, you know, starting from Sulis uh, and heading up to the gorge of the Karnak River, Karnak River, because that was um, a long section and the ground underneath was very boggy. I found that I was digging quite deep along that section and, <laughs> and I remember the feeling of I knew there was a good camping spot 
opposite the cliffs and they're towards the top of the gorge. And I kind of was picking my way up the gorge down this narrow path and I suddenly popped out and recognised the spot with the cliffs. And I hadn't been sure I'd been able to get there. So when I arrived, oh man, was I pleased about that. So what were the best bits of the trail? It's hard to single out a particular moment, but the final night's camp overlooking Sandwood Bay is something I'll never forget. Um, partly because I knew that I'd kind of made it. It was the end was within easy reach. Um, but also because it's such a magical place to spend a night camped. And uh, I've managed to pick up some treats and snacks in the shop at London stores. So I arrived at this on this beautiful view with a warm sunny evening. I could get all my damp gear out and give it a good airing and dry it off. Then sit back with the treats that I bought at the stores and just look over the bay, listen to the waves coming in, knowing that I was pretty much there. We cracked it and uh, there was just a small matter of eight miles across open moorland in the morning. Uh, yeah, I'll never forget that night. Uh, it was the kind of night where you don't really want to zip up the tent and go to sleep. You just want it to, to last forever. Um, I was also extremely grateful for the amount of training that I had done. I don't think uh, people realise, so it's easy to overlook, just how much ascent and descent there is. And uh, over rough ground or with a full pack, inevitably it's a very physical challenge. So I was pleased I'd done so much training. Now to do the trail again, oh, I'd do a lot more. Uh, because basically the more training you can get in in advance, the more you're going to be able to enjoy the trail. Uh, I was also extremely glad that I'd chosen to wear trail runners. Uh, I'm absolutely convinced that they made a big difference to my stamina and uh, your physical effort that was required to walk the trail because they were really so much lighter than boots would have been, especially when they got wet, and so much more comfortable for my feet as well. And I didn't have problems at all with my feet. And on a walk of that length over that kind of country, I'm extremely pleased about that. There was no hint of any blisters or anything like that at all. So uh, if anyone's doing the trail, definitely choose the trail runner route. So looking back on the trail, what's my strongest memory? Um, I think it's this sense of the, I don't know if isolation is the right word, but just being on your own in the middle and immersed in this amazing scenery and countryside and uh, finding your way through it. And uh, um, just being part of the landscape for so long sounds a bit vague but um, because it's a, a, a long trail and traveling through some wild country you really are becoming part of the scenery as you travel through and the other thing is the um, proof if you like that I could do it that you know I could I set myself a tough challenge and I smashed it you know this there were very tough days, you know, for days when I felt rough, days which were extremely tiring and long and arduous. But you know, just goes to show you, keep going, putting one foot in front of the other. Got there. If I was to do it again, the number one I'd say, do more training, get that full pack on and get out and walk up some more hills. The second piece of advice I'd give myself looking back is to be more ruthless about the weight and the gear. Because there were things that I took that I didn't really need to. And the final piece of advice, if I was going to do it again, or just anyone who's thinking of doing the path, is to just allow yourself time 
to stop and uh, appreciate uh, the experience. It's very easy to just get fixated on, you know, that night's destination. Well, when I get to that point or that river or whatever, I'll take a break to just get absorbed in the process of the walk. Um, I think I would like to, uh, I would have liked to stop more and just taken it in and enjoyed it. So in many ways, although it's good to get the trail knocked off in a good quick time, I think that kind of takes away from the pleasure. Uh, so give yourself an extra couple of days. I took a rest day at uh, Alapool, which was a very, very good idea. But uh, on the rest of the trail, you know, just a couple of half length days, even if the weather was good. Partly for your body to give it time to recover a bit, but also mentally to um, just enjoy, you know, the uh, situation. So that leaves the question of what's next. Well, <laughs> plans are afoot. I'm going to be doing um, the north section of the Office Dyke Path in September, uh, just the northern section. Apart from that, well, negotiations are at an early stage at home. <laughs> but I'm looking out for trails that are that are nice, wild, remote scenery. If you've got any suggestions, and I'd love to hear them. I'm thinking the Hebrides might be a nice place to start, but anywhere else, please let me know.